this video I'm going to give you some conclusions as to this class D amplifier like most things there's good news and there's there's some not so good news there's no really bad news at all you'll be pleased to know and I am still going to follow this up with some figures on another video but at the moment I haven't done any figures because as I explained on the first video I didn't want my um, thoughts to be biased now I have been watching Eddie from KISS Audio who's been doing he's slightly ahead of me actually which is a bit annoying but um, his review is more on the technical side and as yet he hasn't mentioned how it sounds whereas my comments are going to be largely what it's like from a user point of view i.e how is it going to sound and how is it to be able to use this amplifier and should you even buy one now I've, I've actually been listening to this for a remarkably long time, getting on for a month now and I normally find the deficiencies of an amplifier long before this but initially I couldn't make up my mind if I liked it better than the L12 I mean you all know I like the L12 and it's still at the moment my favorite amplifier but is this going to come in second or on a par it's not better than for reasons that i'll explain to you now first of all the thing you have to consider is if you're thinking this is going to be a huge power amplifier and it's going to shake the woodwork and um, well it could well still annoy the neighbors but the arbitrary 300 watts is fantasy i mean it is not 300 watts and one figure that i'm going to give you that i have taken using my normal way of doing it i.e both channels driven from a 48 volt supply into eight ohms it gives me 91 watts per channel so it's it's no weakling it, it's it's quite a powerful amplifier but bearing in mind with a 50 volt supply the l12 would give fractionally more than that just around about the 100 um, watts per channel the, the one that i've that i've shown you many times and talked about many times and i've still got that and i still use that as my main source of music but i need to make some reservations about that power it has extensive current limiting in this amplifier whereas the l12 doesn't so in terms of actual loudness the l12 beats it hands down and dynamic range the L12 beats it because as this gets towards its clipping point you can't actually reach music clipping at all if you keep turning it up the clip light comes on and it shuts down well it drops in level it, it current limits and voltage it just limits and when you're approaching this level although you can get 90 watts rms that's continuous state so to speak but if you get near that level let's say at an arbitrary 70 watts the peaks because they are by its very nature peaks sets it into current limiting and the effect of this is it just sounds 
restraint and whereas a, a crash of cymbals should really almost make your ears bleed if you're playing it loud enough and I tend to do that somewhat foolishly perhaps but this amplifier doesn't allow that to happen because it goes into current limiting and soft clips because you can't drive it into hard clipping you know some amplifiers you can get to a certain point and then it goes completely distorted and sounds horrible well because of the way this is you can't do that it just gets to a certain level and it just doesn't get any louder and it's just compressed basically but saying that it does get very loud and I find the sound <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying this but I actually like the sound but it would suit a smaller installation well this is my main gripe about the product now I've not done any 4 ohm tests but I'm sure you, all of you know that a loudspeaker that is 8 ohms isn't 8 ohms like that it's like like this all over the place and at certain frequencies it's probably nearer or even below 4 ohms and, it, and it's actually getting to be a trend in modern speakers where the efficiency drops particularly where they've got two woofers you often find they are 8 ohm speakers 8 ohm drivers and via the crossover you'd think that would mean that they would be 4 ohms but it doesn't quite work like that depending on how the crossover is designed but it does mean that many speakers although they claim 8 ohm impedance can drop to 4 ohms and less and in fact my monitor audios that I'm that I'm pointing to here that you can't see do and they they go down to about 3.6 ohms at certain frequencies now this amplifier does not like this it doesn't like it at all now you can see from here I've been playing Celine Dion track and this is what's prompted me to make this video today because on this particular track called I Drove All Night I'm sure most people would probably know this it starts off at quite a low level then all of a sudden I wish I could demonstrate this but I'll get a copyright strike and you won't hear it anyway so what happens is it comes on and then the bass comes in and it really gets loud and this module does not like that at all it's obviously producing very low frequencies at quite a low impedance and it trips you can see here there's two little LEDs the first one is the they call it a fault light but it isn't really a fault light but that's the one that trips and when it happens the only way you can get it working again is to turn the power off and leave it five or six seconds and repower it the other light is clip and occasionally you will see that light come well not come on go off in fact and when it does go off you can hear this compression and but reduce the level slightly and the light comes back on and it's fine it's something that class D often has a problem with is noise now on the first video I did speak of some noise that this amplifier makes but I found that the problem largely to that and I did say that um, um, there are some buzzes and bits and pieces but I found the problem was when I was doing those tests I had some fairly thin cables just hooked on with crocodile clips particularly on the 48 volts from the power supply and it doesn't like those um, if there's any impedance or significant resistance 
in the power cables that go to the amplifier, even though they are only about 18 inches long, it was long enough with high enough resistance that it induces a, a buzz into the um, amplifier. So I can't blame the amplifier for that because clearly I think everybody knows you're supposed to have thick low resistance cables but it was only a test so that's my excuse. So I've solved that problem. Now it's still a relatively noisy amplifier. Now I'm sitting here now about a meter from my loudspeaker on my left and I can't hear any hiss at all. The amplifier is just idling by the way, it's just muted in other words, um, but it's still connected and the volume control is at about 50%. But if I go, if I go about 10 to 12 inches from the tweeter, I can hear a very gentle hiss. And it's nothing to do with the preamp because I can unplug the preamp. It's just purely a little noisy. But at normal, well, even as I say, a meter from the speaker, I can't hear any hiss at all. So I wouldn't let hiss put you off. But there is a hum that you can detect even from this distance. It's yeah, you know, I am a yes, I'm about a meter away. And it I've tried it now with a linear power supply and it makes no difference. The hum is internally generated. Now I don't know whether it comes from the fact that the amplifier has a switch mode regulator on it that regulates down to twelve volts for the well the the preamp stage for want of a, a better description and it also then follows on with a 3.3 uh, linear regulator to light the two LED fault lights at somewhat excessive brightness I might point out but I don't know whether it's coming from that switch mode regulator to 12 volts or not but there is not a grossly objectionable, but an audible buzz. It's, it, no, it's more of a hum than a... And a it, as yet, I, I haven't determined the frequency or where it comes from. That's for later. At the moment, I'm just telling you what these things think of it. Now, as amplifiers go, it's reasonably sensitive, and some things you might connect to it, you you may not need a preamp but I found on most things in other words the DAC on the computer to get the gain at about 12 to 1 o'clock for sensible listening levels you do need a preamp and on this I'm using just about see it there I'm using the um, AccuPhase clone and um, the gain from that is is, suits it absolutely perfectly. Now the remaining thing I wanted to talk to you about was heat. Now I mentioned in the previous video some temperatures and things like that um, but that's those temperatures I gave you are listening to it at normal to slightly above evaluation level shall we say. So quite loud but not too bad. Now if you listen to it like that um, with 48 volts on it, it does the heat sink, the main amplifier heat sink does get quite warm, but not dangerously so. You're not going to spit on it and there's going to be clouds of steam come off it, anything like that. But bearing in mind the heat sink is not the die temperature, and it's the die temperature that's measured for when the current limiting comes in and the, the fault. I haven't, as I said to you before, I don't really know what the fault is, but it shuts the amplifier down dead and you have to recycle it to get it back on. Now to me, that's, that's an appalling thing because you've only got to get one crash of drums or something like that 
a little bit louder than perhaps well I wouldn't say excessive but it trips it and if you have to get up and recycle the power to me that is just awful and I find that that's the thing that puts me off this amplifier more than anything else but I have to say for most listening it's like we were listening to it all yesterday afternoon um, with Tony Blackburn on Radio 2 for those of you in UK that know what that is and uh, it was on for the whole program played moderately loud but not loud loud and it didn't trip at all but I came up today and put Dion I nearly said Dion Warwick but uh, uh, Celine Dion and um, well I've told I've told you what happens and I was playing some Cat Stevens as well Wild World this morning I know it's old school but I like it that's what old people listen to anyway it didn't like that either it doesn't like transient low frequency bass it really doesn't like it but for more ordinary listening level which would suit you most of the time it's fine getting back to the heating issue it will play louder longer if you can keep it cool and if you noticed when I showed you the view of it I've got a little fan resting well it's tacked on with blue tack I know that's not terribly technical but I'm testing it on your behalf so you don't have to do it now what I would propose to do is to use one of those little 12 volt switch mode modules that I've shown you about which are painfully cheap about three or four dollars to get 12 volts and use a little 12 volt fan and the other little module which I've shown you on my previous video for the L15 to control the fans not not expensive but long term if you were going to use this amplifier in a project I would honestly suggest you you do that the fan isn't going to be noisy because most of the time it's just ticking over and in fact at, at low level and medium level listening the fan will probably never come on at all within the limitations that I've spoken to you about today it's it's a nice amplifier but the L12 is still better more powerful more better dynamic range and doesn't cut out mainly because it doesn't have current limiting on it and that's always the beauty of a genuine amplifier that has a nominal say 120 watts it just means that in in real life you're never going to be clipping it whereas this one it's easy to clip it and easy to upset it thanks for watching i do appreciate it